Hey there, Floss Tube. It's Jessica, the Schoolhouse Stitcher, coming to you on this Sunday, February 9th. Um, it's been a little longer than planned since last time, but oh my gosh, work just got so, so busy. Um, I am a have mentioned before, I'm a project manager in marketing, and most of our marketing deliverables are in January. So the last couple months have been full speed ahead. It was not the most fun thing in the world, but things have slowed down a little bit, just a little, a little less stressful. I feel like I have more time to stitch. I'm not taking my work home as much, um, either literally or mentally. So it's a little, it's a little more relaxed. Thank goodness, because I was, I was at that point. Um, what has been going on? I don't know. I never know what to say in the beginning of the video. And I feel like I don't spend a ton of time on life updates, which is because I'm just like, things happened over the last few months. I cannot recall a single one of them right now. <laughs> um, but you know, we're mostly here for stitching. So we'll just go straight into that. Uh, I have actually been stitching a lot in 2020. Um, I have stitched every single day so far this year, which I'm really proud of. Uh, it was something that I was sitting there and thinking at the end of 2019, um, you know, the last few days in December, and I'm thinking, why have I not felt as much like stitching this past year? Because I, I didn't do a ton of stitching in 2019. I still finished some things, I still worked on some things, but I didn't stitch every day or even almost every day even the majority of the days. Um, so I got to thinking, why don't I feel as much, why don't I enjoy stitching as much? And I kind of realized that one of the things I really enjoy about stitching is feeling like I'm working toward a goal, uh, feeling like I'm working toward that finish. And with, you know, 30 something whips, I just, I don't want to work on. I don't want to work on them. Uh, the way I work best, if I is if I start a project and I kind of ride that new project high until the end. Um, you know, take it as far as I can take it, and then at some point it'll. Um, you know, I'll get tired of the project, or I'll need a break, and I'll switch to something else. Um, either a new start, like start an ornament and finish that really quickly, or turn to one of my other whips. Um, just something to give myself a little break, a little breather, and then come back into my focus project and work on that until it's finished. And that's generally how I stitch best. It's how I'm most productive as a stitcher. And it's something I've really gotten away from the last couple years uh, with Floss Tube. Um, you know, I was looking at my list of uh, current whips and I realized that out of these I forget the exact numbers like 30 31 whips only three of those were started before 2017 so before I started watching floss tube or getting involved in floss tube three so I, so I think that says a lot about how I used to stitch where it was just like one project until I got tired of it and I'd start something else. And then I'd go back to the one that I got tired of and finish that. Um, so I thought, okay, well in 2020, I don't wanna not have new starts because there are some projects I'm really looking forward to, but I wanna clear out some of these whips and I wanna try the, I wanna try going back to the way I used to stitch. So focusing on one project, until I just got tired of it. Not until the next sow came along or until so-and-so is stitching on this and I wanna join them or whatever, but just stitch until I get tired of it. <laughs> uh, so I picked out 15 different products that I would focus on in 2020. Um, and I'm gonna go through and show you those. Um, I'll show you some of them I have finished since January 1st. Oh, sorry, it's Bailey. He never comes over. Hey, sweetie. Hi. 
This is the first time he's ever willingly come over while I'm doing a Flossie video. I tried to bring him over once and I think we just got the butt. Look, are you gonna turn around? You wanna see your face? Okay, just kind of, yeah, hi. Well, let's take off your collar so that you're not gonna jingle jangle. <laughs> I'm gonna have to check that, make sure nothing on his collar showed up. Ooh, sun. Okay, well, can you can you not step on the expensive things? Can you, where's your baby? <laughs> Go get your baby. <laughs> it's really great until he starts stepping on like the silk and then you're like, <laughs> we're done. <laughs> So that's Bailey. He's adorable. He never comes over when I'm filming a video. Um, just got a wild hair today. Uh, anyway, I was telling you about my 2020 plans. Uh, so I picked 15 projects I was going to focus on this year. Um, I have some of them I finished. Uh, some are still whips. and This is all since January 1st. Some I've finished since January 1st. Some are still whips. And then some I have not yet touched. Um, but plan to do them later in the year. Uh, so I have my list. We'll go through that. Uh, one quick thing before I do that though is I did want to announce the winners of my... <laughs> Remember back in October when I did a giveaway? Yeah, that was the thing that happened. Um, I did want to announce the winners to that. So the partridge chart um that goes to melissa eggleston uh melissa i left a message on your comment if you could email me at schoolhouse stitcher at gmail.com or you can also message me on instagram uh, my handle there is schoolhouse stitcher so that's melissa eggleston and the magazine which i mentioned has a a little bit of a cover whoopsie uh, but the magazine with the um, the primitive hairs be happy chart several other options uh, this goes to Sharon Hutchinson Sharon Hutchinson uh, so Sharon I also left a message on your comment and if you could send me an email again that address is schoolhouse stitcher at gmail.com uh, or you can message me on Instagram at Schoolhouse Stitcher. All right, so 2020 stitching plans slash stitching accomplishments because I have done really good at working, or really well at working through these plans. Yay! Um, the first one on my list was Primitive Needles uh, Hallow Sampler. And this is one that I finished. It was almost done, or I had made significant progress in my last video, and I finally just, you know, knuckled down and finished this uh, in, <clears throat> in a few days in January. So this one is out of print. I borrowed the chart from a fellow stitcher. Thank you so much. Uh, I love this. I stitched in the called for threads on 40 count sampler gold by color and cotton and I was very particular in the way I cut this fabric because I only had a fat quarter and I wanted to make sure I had enough for I think two of these so I haven't I definitely have enough for the um, the Christmas version because I wanted it on gold as well but I love these motifs that pumpkin and that cat and the bird with the pumpkin are my favorites by far. So, super happy with that. That is one of 15 that's done. After I finished that one, I was looking for something small and something quick. Um, and on my list of 15 for 2020 are ornaments for um, 
my niece and nephew, my brother's brother's children. Um, I started making my niece an ornament every year after she was born. And after her brother was born, I kind of fell behind. Um, so I owe them each two ornaments. Yeah. Uh, I owe them each two ornaments plus one for 2020. So that's six ornaments total. All six of those are listed as new starts. New starts on my um, 2020 goals. So I started and completed one of them. This is, hang on, let me find the name of it. This is Happy Skater by Little House Needleworks. It is in one of the just cross stitch ornament issues. I cannot remember which one off the top of my head. I will have to look that up. Let me make sure I didn't write it down. Let's see, that was January 7th. I did not write it down. So this is from one of the just cross stitch ornament issues. I'll put it in the description box below. It's Happy Skater. It's stitched on 32 count Summer Khaki Belfast by Zweigart with DMC. So that's one of six down. Five more to go for the year. Um, I'm just, my plan is to sprinkle these throughout my projects. I usually do Little House Needleworks or something similar for them because they are fairly quick. Um, this one, you know, took me, let me see if I wrote it down. Uh, this one took maybe three days to stitch. So it doesn't take it doesn't take me terribly long. Um, I just need to sit down and actually do it. So those were two of my 15 goals. The additional five ornaments. That makes seven. So I've goal number eight, I believe. Let's see, that's right, six, seven. Yes, goal number eight. Um, this is one I wanted to stitch for before the prim stitchers retreat happens in april because i stitched the companion piece and had it framed at that retreat last year and i would like this one to be framed in the same frame so this is lizzie kate and it is called come let us adore him it's one of her boxer kits so it came with the fabric which i think is like a 30 count natural 30 count northern cross something like that it's one of the stiffer linens um it came with the linen and the buttons and the chart and i just stitched this with dmc because i had also stitched when i stitched the companion piece which is lizzie kate's joy to the world uh, which i believe i showed in my last video because i had had it framed um i at that time i was not really stitching with over dyes a lot so I had just stitched it in the call for DMC so when I stitched this one I wanted them to match reasonably well so I just uh, used DMC as well and these are super cute um, one thing to note that I didn't realize before I started or I might have changed some things if you're stitching both come let us adore him and joy to the world they use different DMC's use different colors. They look very similar, uh, but the colors are, are slightly different. So it's a slightly different green, a slightly different reds. Um, I think the white is probably the same, um, but everything else is a little different. So if that bothers you, um, if I had known that beforehand, I might have changed this to the same colors as in Joy to the World, but it looks fine. It doesn't bother me. They look similar enough. Um, when they're in the same frame, they look great. So that was goal number eight. Goal number nine was for pre-stitching for the Prim Stitchers Retreat. Uh, there is a class piece that we'll, we have two classes there. One is taught by Faith, uh, the Carolina Stitcher, and one is um, taught by Dames of the Noodle, I think. 
Um, anyway, I went ahead and did, we did have a pre-stitching assignment for that particular class. So I went ahead and completed that so it would be out of the way. That is the measure twice cut once. Um, and this will be finished as a tray, uh, the bottom of a tray. It did call for this color of blue uh, for all four words, but I tr stitched twice cut once and realized, and the bird, and realized that I was not going to have enough blue to stitch measure. Um, so at that point, I just said, you know what? I have all this extra gray. It's the same color that was used for the scissors. I'm gonna stitch measure in that. I think it'll balance nicely with the scissors at the bottom. And then once I had stitched it, I started looking, I was like, eh, I kind of want it to alternate. So like gray, blue, gray, blue, gray scissors. So that's what I ended up with. And those are all my finishes. So I finished four of my 15 goals. Um, another five of the ornaments, which I'll get to eventually. And then two of them are whips that I worked on a little bit in January. Uh, so this first one, I don't have a ton of progress on it um, because it was not my focus whip. I'll show you my focus whip in a moment. But this is Wild Garden by Blackbird Designs. I would like, this is another one I'd like to finish this year. Um, I finished the berries and the green and I'm now got a teeny tiny start on the uh, the limbs and the leaves that come out or the stems and leaves that come out from the uh, from the berry basket and there'll be a basket down here and it'll be a square thing um, this is the one where when I started you can kind of tell by how it's centered in the the q-snap and how much fabric is left on that one side so I stitched this this yellow berry first, I think, or this pink one. Who's this pink one actually? Um, I stitched this pink berry first. Now, for some reason, when I looked at my work and I looked at the chart, I stitched this pink berry and I thought, okay, I stitched the bottom right berry. So I just worked up and over. And then I started looking, I thought, not a lot of fabric left on that left side. This berry was the top middle berry. It was this berry. So I should have worked here and then worked all this like down. So you can see I'm a little tight on space. I did work it out. I think I have, um, I have about an inch, maybe a little less, maybe three quarters of an inch on this side and the top. So it is enough to stitch it, it's enough to finish it. At some point I'm gonna pull it out of the Q-snap and zigzag over the edge because I don't want to lose any additional fabric to, uh, you know, fraying, no. I need every, uh, every thread I can get in that fabric <laughs> needs to stay there. Um, but I really like the, I like the colors in this. This is, it's pretty. I don't have a photo because it came in a tin um, and I took it out of the tin and just put it, um, just put the, the chart and materials in my project bag. Um, but it is, I believe it is out of print. Uh, it was a full kit, came with the chart, this fabric and all the threads. And it also, I believe came with a, a button, I think, or um, charm of some type to put on it. I think this will be my focus piece after I finish up the one that I'm going to show you next. And the one I'm going to show you next, I'm really excited about. It needs a little prep because I forgot to take it out of the Q snap. So I'm just going to do that now. All right, this is two, three, four. All right, that was. Ten, I believe. Let's see. One, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is number eleven. 
This is the Blizzard 1854 by the Traveling Stitcher. And let's see if I can get good light. Yes. So this is stitched on 46 count oatmeal cookie by Dixie Sampler uh, using a silk conversion from the attic with a few changes by me. Uh, because when I pulled the silks um, in the attic's conversion, I was at the attic, so I was comparing the silks against um, the model that they had up, and I was looking at some of them thinking, eh, that dye lot's changed, it's a little too orange, that dye lot's changed, it's a little too whatever. Uh, so I went through and picked a few, I used most of their colors, but I went through and picked a few of my own that I felt uh, better match the model that they had given current dye lots. I really love the variety of alphabets across the top. And they're different sizes, no print and script. I love the pop of blue and brown. So all I have left to do is continue this line of letters out to here. So I've done T-U-V, W-X-Y-Z, just four more letters. And I have three motifs to do down here. And they're kind of like, um, they're not the same motifs, but it's a similar composition to what's over here, where it's gonna be a flower, a bird, and a vase. So that'll be flower, bird, vase. And then this will be done. Let's see if we can get some of the color. These are not really my usual colors. Um, it's very, it's a lot of pink. And pink is not my usual color. But I really like it in this. I think it's the blue and the brown and white just kind of, uh, especially that blue and the brown. Um, So yeah, I am super happy with this. Um, the 46 count is not terrible to work on. Um, I find it, it's really not that much different from 40 count for me. Um, there are some lighting situations uh, like our guild, um, the sampler guild that um, I'm a member of. The place we're meeting in now, the lighting is not so great. So it's a little difficult for me to see 46 count in that lighting. I can still do 40, but 46 is a bit of a stretch. But in most situations, I don't have a problem stitching on 40 count without, uh, or stitching on 46 um, without any special lighting or magnification. And that's not, that's not necessarily because I'm young. It's because I have amazingly good contacts. <laughs> um, I have truly terrible eyesight um, if I do not have my contacts in. So I spend a lot of money on contacts every year so that I can see to do 46 count or 40 count without additional lights or magnification. <sighs> Eye doctors for the win. Okay, the next four that are the final four that are on my list for 2020. Um, these are, again, all of these are things I want to get finished in 2020. Uh, these are not things that I have worked on yet this year, but they're just awaiting their turn. They'll get there. The first one is another, um, another Blackbird Designs, and this is English Garden Sewing Bag. This was a gift from a viewer, and I absolutely love it, and I don't know why I haven't finished it yet, other than, ooh, shiny. Yeah. But here is a very wrinkly view of what that looks like right now. Uh, so I'm maybe, what, halfway done? Something like that. Maybe halfway. Maybe a little less. Uh, <clears throat> I think... 
actually, you know what? I don't even know why uh, why I'm taking so long on this. I was going to say, I think the reason I'm taking so long is because there are a lot of small places of, that, you know, only have a few stitches of each color. But, I mean, it's not terrible. I love it. This is stitched on a fabric that I should have written down. Hmm. Mystery fabric. Mystery 32 count fabric. Not really sure what it is. It might be vintage exemplar or light exemplar. I think it's one of those. If I um, if I find where I wrote it down, because I know I wrote it down somewhere, uh, it's probably in my X Stitch app on my phone. Uh, but if I find where I wrote it down, then I will mention it in the comments below, or in the description box below, rather. That's okay. just a closer look of those thread at those threads. So. It really, it only uses five colors. Um, they're really pretty. So I'm very much looking forward to finishing that one. Uh, but like I said, I think Wild Garden will be my next focus just because it's a little closer to being finished. Um, and it goes a little bit faster because there are bigger patches of one color. Um, so I feel like I could knock that out reasonably quickly. Um, I'm hoping to finish e -blazer possibly by the end of next week. I have several days off next week, so I'm kind of hoping I can do it. Cross fingers. Um, but definitely by the end of February. Alright. The next one on my list. I have not done quite as much on this one as I thought I had, but whatever. Don't matter. Um, this is Shepherd's Bush Holly and Ivy. Oops. It's a teeny tiny picture. Their pictures are always so small. Um, but I love this chart. Um, I loved it. I remember seeing people post it on um, blogs and were message boards a thing in 2008? They might have been, but definitely blogs. Um, I remember people posting it on blogs when it first came out, and I loved it. I loved the way it looked. I saw this at, um, it was either this one or the companion piece, which I can't remember what the companion piece is called now. Maybe O Come All You Faithful, I don't know. Uh, but I saw one of them at a cross-stitch store in my area that was going out of business and everything was 75% off and I thought, ooh, should I get this? No, no, I won't stitch it. That was back when I had less money and could not buy all the stash. Now I would just be like, and I didn't know how to sell things online because that wasn't a big thing back then. Now I would just be like, 75% off, sold, done, gimme. If I end up not using it or deciding I don't want it, I'll turn around and sell it online. And I know I can sell it for, you know, what, this kit was $40 new? Yeah, I think I can sell it for at least $10. I made questionable decisions in my youth. All right, so here's where I am with Holly and Ivy. Um, there are a mess of threads on that back that need to be tucked in, so we're not gonna show that. And as you can see, I just kind of in the middle of that line. Um, this is stitched one thread over two on 32 count. And I, from the feeling of this 32 count, I'm thinking it's something like Weeks Parchment. Um, this says 30 count parchment. No wait, that's materials needed because this just came with the, hmm, 
You know what? I have no idea if this came with the linen. I don't remember. It had linen in it when I acquired the kit for free on the freebie table at the Midwest, Midwest Cross Stitchers Retreat. Score! Um, but I am pretty sure this is Weeks Parchment. I don't remember if it's 30 or it's 32, but it's done with one strand of silk over two. And I have completed one row of the over one stitching, which I really like over one stitching, so that does not bother me at all. Um, what I find more annoying are the specialty stitches because it's more difficult for me to start and stop those. Um, I'm pretty sure I also stitched this white motif in whatever color was called for or that came with the kit and it just blended right in. You could not see it at all. Uh, so I said, nope, not gonna do that. Uh, turned around, went to the freebie table, found a chart that um, I was like, no one is ever going to stitch this chart. It was like the Millennium Sampler or something, all about the year 2000 in, when did I go to the Midwest retreat? 2018? No. Um, so I just said, I, I'm going to liberate the white thread from this kit. I took the kit too. Like I took the whole thing. I didn't just steal a thing of floss and leave the rest for someone to find. I took the whole kit, but I took it for the floss, not for the, not for the chart. Um, and I wouldn't have done that if it had been, you know, a more popular kit, but come on. Who is starting? Not going to judge if you still have a whip, but who is starting the Millennium Sampler? Who was starting it in 2018? It just wasn't. It wasn't happening. That's number 13 of the 2020 stitching goals. Number 14, which is um, I may actually have to purchase this chart again because it's going to drive me insane. But my mom had asked me if I would, um, she found this kit on clearance and Hobby Lobby or something and she asked me if I would stitch it up. It is Nativity Motifs by this artiste is the kit manufacturer but the design is by Cooler Design Studio. Um, this chart, y'all. This chart. I'm going to show you the chart because there's not a thing you could do with this if you wanted to steal it. This is the chart. For comparison's sake, this is my needle. Do you see this? This chart is so blurry. It looks like someone took a screenshot of a small area, plopped it into a Word document, and then blew it up 100%. So instead of showing at 100, it's showing at 200%. Like, that's how blurry this thing is. Also, like, why? Why would you do this? I mean, use a bigger piece of paper. Fold the chart. It's already folded. Just put it on a bigger piece of paper and print it like landscape mode. It's a terrible chart. Um, I have read that if you email Hobby Lobby, they will send you a better one. So I'm going to try doing that. If that does not work, then I will have to make a decision as to whether I would like to suffer through this ridiculously small chart, um, which uh, da, 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 fortunately does not appear to have fractional stitches, but it does have back stitching, a lot of back stitching, a lot, a lot of back stitching. All the red is back stitching. So I have to decide whether if 
I can't get them to send me a better chart. I'll have to decide if I want to muddle through with this or if I want to buy the re-release, which the re-release is by Cooler Design Studio. Uh, I think it's called, um, instead of Nativity Motifs, it's something like Nativity Ornaments. And it doesn't necessarily show them stitched up like this. It shows the, uh, the pixelated, computer-generated picture, but it's the same thing. It's the same design. Um, it just presumably would have a better chart. Here is my whopping start on this. I don't even know which way this goes. That way. Woo! Look at that. This is not using the fabric that came in the kit because that was some kind of white Ada and it was scratchy and it was cut wonky. So I probably would have had like a half an inch on one side and I just said, nope, 32 count white Belfast Buzz Weigart. Um, but this is a focus piece for this year because I kind of just want to get it out of the way. I don't want it hanging over my head for another year. Uh, she gave it to me last year and she was like, oh, you could finish this for my birthday. I'm like, no, that's in like a month. Uh, I said, how about Christmas? Well, I did not make Christmas, clearly. Uh, because once I opened it and saw the chart, I was like, whoa. <laughs> I need to be in a good headspace for that and I am not there right now. Um, so yeah, that put that on my list because I want I want to get it out of the way. And the final thing on my list, I mentioned I took a look at my whips and that most, all but three of them were from 2017 or later. Well, my oldest whip is from 2012 and it is Sampler de Noel by Novely. This is what it looks like. That shows how big it's going to be. This is on a 28 count raw or natural um, Cashel by Zweigart, I think. And it's stitched using DMC. Um, I need to do, let's see. Obviously finish the border. There's another motif between the Santa and the birdhouse. There's a motif under the um, Christmas tree. And then I think there are like two longer ones, two or three longer ones at the bottom. And there's a dog here. It's not necessarily my style anymore, but you know, it's cute. Um, I still want to finish it. I'll probably make it into like a pillow or something. It can go up here. That'll be cute. So my thought is that I'll finish my oldest whip this year. And then next year I'll finish my second oldest whip. And the year after that I'll finish my third oldest whip. Plans. I have great plans. We'll see if they come to fruition, but I have great plans. Whew. Okay. So that's what I'm gonna be working on for 2020. I do have a few new starts planned. Um, there are a couple, you know, there are a few things I wanna do. There are three things in particular. I'll mention those as I uh, go through the video a bit more. God, this is gonna be a long one. Um, that's what happens when you don't make videos for four months. They're long. Uh, but before I get into haul and showing you a couple new starts as I, or potential new starts as I go through haul, I wanted to show you um, an FFO and something random but cool. So my FFO, if you watched my videos from a couple years ago, some of my first videos I think, 
then you have probably seen la -dee da sampler hair. The bunny was in timeout for a long time after I finished it because it just, this bunny and I, we had problems. We did not get along. It was stitched on weeks and I hate weeks. Hate it. Um, well, I hate weeks if I do, the fabric is too small for me to put it in a Q-snap or a hoop and get very tight tension. This was too small to put in a Q-snap or a hoop. And because I spent so much dang money on this kit, a kit that came with a tiny piece of Weeks fabric, DMC, a backing fabric, and a bow, because I spent so much money on this kit, I was going to use that fabric. I was not going to waste any more money. So, the bunny was stitched in hand with two strands of DMC over two threads of fabric. At one point, I miscounted the threads and I think I stitched one over either just one thread or over two, three, th three, whatever. Somewhere down here, there's a mistake. I can't immediately find it, so I'm cool with it. Um, but after that debacle, oh, and after spending so much money on the kit, this was released as a chart almost immediately after market. We don't talk about it. But the bunny was in timeout. I knew that the bunny was going to stay in timeout for years, maybe forever, because every time I looked at that bunny and thought about putting it together and thought about touching that week's linen, I was just like, Neh. So last year, Prim Stitcher Society retreat, I gathered up the bunny, I gathered up the finishing materials, I took it to Faye and I said, Faye, I need you to finish my bunny. <laughs> I have never had anyone finish something for me before. I have always finished my own stuff. But you got to do this, buddy. <laughs> so Faye did a wonderful job of this buddy. This is not the backing fabric that came with the kit. I actually um, liberated the backing fabric and used it to back a... Uh, Palm Street Sampler Design, Bow Full of Mary's one. Uh, because it looks so cute with it, it matched it perfectly. It really needed to go on that one. Um, and at the time, the bunny was still on timeout, so I'm just like, steal your fabric. So this is the bunny. He's super cute. Um, we're, we're becoming friends again. It's a slow process, but we're getting there. The other thing I wanted to show you is not stitching related, but for my birthday, I, uh, my husband and I went to my parents' house, and while we were there, um, a lot of times while we're, there, while we're there, I'll go through different boxes or, you know, the closets or things in the attic and um, kind of collect pieces that my parents have from my grandparents, my great-grandparents, uh, or that belonged to them when they were younger, that they just... They don't want to display. They don't want to give them away, but they don't have anything to do with them. Uh, so I try to see what I can um, liberate and take back with me so that I can display it in my house. And I have quite a few things displayed. Um, I don't think there's anything, there's nothing on this back here. There are some things up here, um, like these bottles. Uh, one of these was my grandma's, one was my great grandma's, one was my husband's grandma's. Um, and there are just, you know, things like that. The, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a blue thing behind it. That was a, uh, a chalkboard that was on the, uh, it was the door of my toy chest when I was uh, little. I got it when I was like two. Uh, so there are just little things like that that I'll pick up and I'll sprinkle around my home and use for decoration. Uh, but this one... I was looking for a quilt top uh, that my grandma gave me 
when um, when I was young and I knew it wasn't finished and it was more of a, a crazy quilt type so all the blocks were different sizes it used all different types of fabric um, I have not been able to locate that yet I know I wouldn't give it away I know my mom wouldn't give it away so it's somewhere in their house we just can't find it but we were looking for that and then my mom said Oh, well, I have this. You can have it. This is way too big for me to show you the whole thing here, but it's a full-sized flannel quilt. You can just see some of the funkier blocks. Um, this was made by my grandma. Um, it likely uses fabrics that my grandpa brought home uh, he worked at a, uh, they always call it the shirt plant, so a place that makes shirts. Um, but he worked there, so a lot of times he would bring home um, fabrics or buttons or notions that were, you know, kind of surplus. Um, or they would like sweep the floor at the end of the day and they would, you know, so many buttons would fall when you're constantly running machines. Um, so they would sweep the floor and they would collect the buttons and people would take them home. Um, and I just have, uh, so that's where we think all this is from because it's all flannel. Uh, there are some pieces on the back that have, uh, uh, let me see if I can find one. There are some pieces on the back that still have stickers that they used to put on shirts and things back then. I don't immediately see one, even though I kept running into it the last time I looked at this. But of course, when you want one, it's never there. Um, but some of them have stickers on the back. Uh, some of them are, uh, I guess they couldn't, there's one. So yeah, they just have different stickers on the fabric. Uh, sometimes she didn't have quite enough to make a block, so she would just take either two pieces. Uh, you can kind of tell here they took two pieces of the same fabric and sewed them together to just make a block that was the right size. Uh, there are a lot of those. There are some where she didn't have enough fabric uh, of the same type of fabric, so she just took. Um, two fabrics that were similar and sewed them together and said good enough and I really love this um, it's really warm just sitting here on my lap and this is just the top uh, there's one where she just took two different fabrics so a blue and a brown and said good enough uh, it's really warm it needs to be um, basted and quilted and bound, which is something I kind of know how to do in theory. I've never done it before. I've never quilted before. I guess I'll try it. Um, I mean, I don't really have like, um, However, I feel like it would be very expensive to have to pay somebody to have this bound um, or to have this finished and bound. Uh, so I'll try it. Oh, and she also just used whatever thread she had available. So like this is red, this is brown. Um, there's a green thread. You know, just whatever, literally whatever I think was in her sewing machine. You know, there's white. Whatever was in her sewing machine for whatever project she was working on, she just went with it. Uh, so I really love this. It does have that slight um, old smell, like I've been sitting in a closet for 40 years. Uh, and it needs to be washed, but it has to be finished before it can be washed or else it's going to turn into a knotted, tangly mess on the ends. And uh, So that's my plan for 2020, kinda. 
is to find a backing fat I'm thinking a um I guess you want to use flannel so it'd be the same fabric so they theoretically react to washing in the same way anyway offhand I was like maybe blue flannel maybe I don't know um cotton batting sandwich that stuff together figure it out um, I would not do that as my first project I would probably actually literally just get two pieces of fabric and some batting and put them together and practice quilting and figure out the tension on my machine and make sure the feet is fine and oh yeah I'm a little nervous about that um, Diana I may need you to hold my hand <laughs> I'm not gonna mess this up you got this um, but you know I mean I can't mess it up that badly I think I hope uh, so we'll give that a try this year maybe it'll happen I hope so um, if not then it'll sit in my closet for another year or so until I get to it okay God, y'all, we're almost in an hour, and I haven't even done a haul. So, um, let's go through. I have a few sets. So, I have things I purchased, things I got for Christmas, and things I got for my birthday. Because my birthday was February 1st. It turned 37. And I got some good stitchy birthday presents for my husband. So, we'll start with the things that I bought. Um when you don't do I keep all this in a basket so um, between Flossie videos I just as I receive things or as I finish things I just throw them in a basket uh, and then when I get ready to do a video I just bring out the basket and put everything into piles I was putting everything to piles so I was like hmm you, uh, you have some pretty big piles when you when you don't film in four months uh, but the first thing is last year I was part of the um, Birds of a Feather Handwork Series by Scattered Seed Samplers, which was a wonderful club uh, by uh, Tammy Black, Scattered Seed Samplers. And we received four pieces throughout the year, or four kits throughout the year. Um, I signed up after kit two because I saw it and I was just like, I loved kit one. I saw kit two, I'm like, oh, I love that. And then she made some posts about, um, I'm almost out of the, rings or whatever accessory it is that comes with this kit so if you want the kit you need to order now and I was like ah, ordering now okay <laughs> um so the last one the third one was a strawberry and then this one is um this is super cute she um her kits are really beautifully packaged as you can see it has the backing fabric. The stitching fabric is hidden inside the backing fabric. Uh, the bottom fabric, there's the ribbon, the needle, the threads, which are all DNC, are looped through the ring that will be put on the top of the pin keep. And then you have a little charm. I have not signed up for one of her clubs for this year. Um, I haven't signed up for any clubs for this year because I was trying to keep um, my spending options a little more open. Um, and most of the club kits that come out, I've found I can get on the secondary market. Um, the only thing I make an, would make an exception for would be if Blackbird Designs did another annual club um, like they did with dying to stitch then I would be yes please I'm all over that so these next two things I bought from um, were on clearance at a local online store it's an online store but it's run by someone in Georgia uh, called string theory needle arts and they are oops, this Liberty starburst pen pillow kit by summer house stitch works which I have eyed this at the Prem Stitchers Retreat every 
year for like, when did this come out? 2015. So like three or four years. Basically every Prem Sisters retreat, I have eyed this chart. And every one I said, no, I'm not going to get it. There's so many other things. No, no, no. Well, this past year I said, in Memphis, I said, you know what? I'm going to get that pillow. You know what she finally sold out of at the retreat? <laughs> oh, the Liberty Starburst pen pillow. But Strength Theory Needle Arts had this on clearance, so I picked it up. And I was like, yes, it comes with... Um, the colors are Country Redwood and Freedom. Uh, comes with the fabric and threads, and the little strip of uh, strip of felt that you put in the middle. And at the same clearance, I picked up Stacy Nash Primitives Halloween at Holly Berry Farm, because I have Christmas and I have summer, and now I have Halloween. I don't get. I don't have spring. Spring doesn't. Um, well, I probably need to take another look at spring because my tastes change. But at the time that uh, I started collecting this series, spring didn't really float my boat. Um, so I just got the three. This one, my husband and I saw at a, um, uh, we went to a needlework exhibit at uh, Bullock Hall here in uh, Georgia, um, the Atlanta metro area. And this was several months ago, so they, they no longer have it on, but it's something that I think they do like once a year or once every other year maybe um, through a different sampler guild. And anyway, so we went to this sampler exhibit, a needlework exhibit, I talked them into going with me, and they had this stitched on murky, I think. And it was really, really gorgeous. And it's one that my husband actually looked up and he said, ooh, I like that one. That one's cool. It's like, oh, I have that chart on my wish list. Does that mean I should buy it? It's like, yeah, I like the way that looks. Yes. Done. I also picked up a parchment tap. I got this off 123 Stitch. I picked up Parchment Tapestry by Rosewood Manor because I have loved this ever since it came out. I always talk myself out of it. I finally saw somebody working on it on Instagram. It was beautiful. I love it. So I finally just said, you know what? I'm getting it. I love it. The colors are beautiful. Um, it's just, it's really, really nice. And they do have ideas inside for um, minis. So like create a needle book cover um, and insert initials in it. Uh, um, create a Christmas ornament using this. Mix and match needle book covers and scissor fobs. Uh, so they do have some little minis in here that are kind of scattered throughout. Um, there's a, ooh, there's a tapestry welcome one and a tapestry welcome two. Which I can't show you because she doesn't stitch those up. Um, but that is super cute. It's basically the word welcome. I didn't realize this was in here. Uh, it's basically the word welcome and then it's three um, like Quaker style or these floral Quaker style motifs at the top. Sorry, you can't see that if it's held down there. Uh, so it's like the word welcome with like three motifs kind of like this at the top. Um, but it's in the back and it's super cute. ideas. All right. I also looked down on a few eBay and stash unload finds. Um, so the first thing I got, uh, there was someone on one of the stash sites who was selling some good housewife charts for very good prices. And I managed to pick up two that have not been re-released and that have been on my wish list for a very long time. One of those is the Queen's Diamond. Sorry, it's, um, ooh, that did not help. It's 
very sunny here today after being very rainy yesterday. No, I did not get snow. I'm not in, uh, I'm closer to downtown Atlanta, so I'm really in the heart of Atlanta. Uh, we did not get real snow. We got flurries and then we got a lot of rain. The snow was north. But this is super cute. I love this. Um, I also picked up a Pennsylvania alphabet sampler, which is one of my favorite designs of hers. Um, and I'm sorry I cannot give you a better photo that doesn't have glare, but you know. Gorgeous. And this just uses DMC. Sweet. Did you both of you? No. Queen's Diamond uses NPI. Ha ha. That's not going to happen. Um, well, I say ha ha and then you'll see what I bought later and be like, girl. I also had very good luck on eBay. Um, I was browsing and came across, checked my save searches and this popped up for like six dollars plus shipping yes please moon garden this has been at um, one of the charts at the top of my wish list for blackbird designs uh, because it's one that i think cozy egg was stitching it and my husband happened to look up and he goes oh that looks cool so anytime my husband says that looks cool then i really want to as long as it's something that's already on my list, then I'm like, hmm, I need to make sure I get that. And these next two, I paid a little bit more than I normally would for charts, but you'll see why. Um, this one, Primitive Needles, Salem Village. This one came up as a buy it now for like 25 bucks. So I said, sold, gimme. Um, this has been one of my most desired charts of hers. Um, and I also had Witches 9 come up for like 30 bucks, so I picked it up too. Primitive Needle is the only one that I'll pay $30 for a chart. And even then, it depends on the chart. Some of them I'm not going to pay 30 bucks for. Uh, but the more complex ones, like Witches 9 and Salem Village, uh, those I would, those I was, I was okay with paying that. The, uh, <sighs> so now I just need to find Witches Hollow. <laughs> right. Good luck with that. Um. I'm trying not to borrow charts this year too because that's the thing is some of the ones one thing I didn't mention is my 2020 goals a lot of the charts in there are things that they're more like obligation stitching so like hallow sampler I had borrowed from someone um, you know nativity motifs I was stitching it for my mom uh, the English garden sewing bag someone gave me that I have the uh, the six ornaments in there that I need to do so I mean that right there that's a significant portion of things that I'm like, I'm stitching it for somebody or I'm stitching it because somebody let me borrow it or someone gave it to me. Um, there is another project that's on my list that I am hoping to add to the 2020 and I forgot to bring it over so I could show it to you, but it's the Summer House Stitch Works. It's one of the Fragments in Time series. Uh, it's one of the, among the first ones she did. Um, but I have a friend who let me borrow those charts a ridiculously, like embarrassingly long time ago like years seriously it's embarrassing um and i didn't start them and i tried to figure out so i finally sat down and figured out why i didn't start them and it's because one of the colors that's called for is kind of a rust color and then it has this um yellow with like a green greenish tint to it and i realized i didn't care for those together so if I change those colors, I should be good. Uh, so I'm taking those charts to um, uh, the retreats that I'm going to where I'll be near needlework stores that actually have a thread selection so that I can sit there 
and go through and pick out threads and stitch the chart because fortunately she's already stitched it and she, I've offered it back to her. I'm like, do you want this back? Cause I'm taking forever. She's like, no, no, it's fine. But I'm just like, this is embarrassing. I need to stitch this and give it back. Badly. So, um, so yeah, I'm trying to limit my, uh, chart borrowing this year. Um, depending on what comes up. Um, the next things I got, um, I got a couple charts for Christmas. I didn't get a lot of stitching stuff for Christmas, um, but I did get a couple for my husband. He got me Plum Street Samplers Farmstead Christmas, which has been on my list for a very long time. And the glare is terrible. Um, I'm gonna try moving you. Nope, we're just gonna have to deal with it. Glare's terrible. Um, but this has been on my list for a long time. I really love it. Yay, I found the perfect spot. <laughs> I'm gonna stay here forever. Um, I really love it. And can't wait to start that. And I'm probably gonna stitch this in DMC instead of NPI. Um, I'll look at it, I'll compare it. If there are some colors that I really don't like the DMC for, I'll probably just find a different DMC, honestly, because this is not, um, it's not one that I would stitch in silk. And he also got me Maria Selby Humphrey by Blackbird Designs, which has also been on my list for a very long time because I love every chart in this book. Um, I love the sampler. I saw someone who did this, uh, who had it framed at Prim Stitcher's Retreat. It was gorgeous. I've seen people working on the, um, the drum pin keep. And I have not seen as many people working on the little one, but it's still cute. I'm a sucker for diamond shapes. I really love these filled diamonds. Um, I don't know why that is, but yeah, that just does it for me. So I absolutely love this whole book and cannot wait to start it. Um, I'm thinking... I would probably start with the sampler itself because I love it so much. Um, what does it call for? Okay, so it's all like um, gentle arts, so that's not too bad. Um, it's not like it's in silk or anything. And then for my birthday, my husband did even better. He got me. Stacy Nash Prentice, Jack's House Pen Keep. Someone did this, um, and there's another pen keep with pumpkins on dark fabric, and I'm gonna buy that one too because I love both of them. He got me Salem Hill Sampler by the Scarlet House because I mentioned that Emily is doing this as a birthday stitch along, and I said, I really love that chart, it's so cute. And so he bought it for me so I could take part in the stitch along. He got me the Scarlet House Sarah Redfern, 1826. This one I will probably stitch in the silks. Um, it calls for Belle Soir and Gloriana, um, but it doesn't call for a ton. There are like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are like nine of them. Um, so it's not, that's like less than a hundred dollars. So that's fine. I do a cost benefit analysis on whether the silks are worth it. How long will it take me to stitch um, versus, uh, um, and how much the, the silks cost. And then finally, he got me Eliza Bell Cox, 1832, from Hands Across the Sea. And I love this one. I saw this one stitched up at the attic and thought it was so, so beautiful. Um, at the time, I also thought it was so, so big. Um, but I'm thinking that at the attic, it was maybe stitched on a bigger count because on the um, on 46 count, it's only 
about 13 and a half by 19 inches. That's a good size, but it's not huge. And that's 46, not 40. Uh, but I love this. And as I point out to him when I was showing him, um, because even though he bought them, I make him sit down so I could go over the charts and be like, look, this is what I like about this one, and this is what I like about that one, and I'm gonna do this in this color. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Um, but someone had mentioned, uh, that the parrot's about to eat this, uh, bug or butterfly or whatever. So they said, um, they're like, you know, look, it, it, it's pretty and it's murder. <laughs> so that's all I can think of every time I see this chart is like, it's beautiful and it's murder. <laughs> but I love this so much. Last of all, <sighs> brief, um, last of all, so I mentioned I didn't get a lot of cross stitch stuff for Christmas. That is true. Whoop. My phone is like, you're talking too much. The battery's getting low. Hurry it up. I'm getting there. I'm almost done. Uh, I mentioned I didn't get a lot of cross stitch stuff for Christmas, which is true. I didn't get stuff from other people, but... I did buy myself some stuff uh, using Christmas money and then we tend to do a uh, my husband and I tend to sit down with any gift cards that we receive for Christmas or birthdays etc and we'll, we're very strategic and weird uh, so we'll sit down and we're like all right I got Amazon gift card am I gonna spend all this Amazon gift card on stuff that I want or is there something else I want more there's something else I want more okay well I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this $50 Amazon gift card toward this line item in our household budget so next time we need to order I don't know, batteries or dog food or whatever that we order off Amazon we'll use the gift card instead and I get an equal amount of cash to spend on whatever I want I told you we're strategic and weird um, but I had that and I had quite a bit of money sitting in a PayPal account from when I sold some stash back in the fall uh, that I had honestly kind of forgot about until I uh, happened to log in. I was like, oh, holy, holy crap. Um, so I treated myself for a few days. Um, now I have had this book ever since it came out. This is the original, the Ufendel Sisters with Anne and Isabella. I really want to stitch Anne's sampler. I love everything about it. I love the colors. I love the composition. I love the um, the checkerboard, the patchwork basket at the bottom. Um, the flowers, the bird, just everything. I love it. So I really wanted to stitch this. And I had seen people stitching it in DMC and I had seen people stitching it in silk and I decided I really want to use the silk for once because at the time I had never stitched in silk. So I decided to use some of my Christmas money and I purchased the silks. Now I already had this piece of fabric. This is the, um, this is 40 count uh, vintage pecan butter, which I think is what it costs for. So I already had the fabric, but I bought the silks. And I'm looking forward to starting that one at some point. I also decided I wanted to start. Um, there is a sale that started on February 1st, which I have not yet joined in on, but I will at some point, for Dorothy Walpole by The Scarlet Letter. I have seen this one stitched in person by a member of my guild and love it. It is so, so beautiful. The colors are gorgeous. So I purchased the silk for that and I already had some fabric um, it is a 40 count it's 40 count lambs wool by white chill which yes I know stiff um, but Dorothy Walpole because of the shape of this anything that's long and skinny like that um, like the and they send sampler I put on scroll rods so I think it'll be fine. The only thing that really bothers me about the stiff fabric is when it's like 
you know, you put in the Q-snap and it's like sticking straight out like that. That drives me insane. But if it's on a scroll rod, it doesn't do that. It's fine. Um, so I'm gonna use this. This is the actually what the kit comes with if you order it through Scarlet Letter. I already had this. This is the uh, a skinny half that's left over from And They Send. So I thought that worked out well. The color goes with it. Um, I auditioned a few other fabrics, but I just didn't, I didn't like the colors as much as I like this one. So, um, that is potential start number two. And then definite start at some point is, and I blame Emily for this one because somehow I didn't notice this when it came out. Anne Thomas, 1854. It's counterintuitive. I would think that I would need to angle it this way to get rid of the glare because the windows are here, but actually for some reason this way. Perfect. I love this so much. And this one, I also treated myself to the silks. And I'm going to stitch this on, I have had this piece of fabric forever never knew what to do with it. It is 40 count. Let's see if I can get the color right. Uh, it's a 40 count fawn by um, Lakeside Linen. This is a fat half. I bought this years ago when a local needlework store was closing down. Um, and the way that she closed down, and I may have mentioned this before, is she just immediately set everything at 75% off. There was no, first it's at 30, then it's at 40, this, no, it was 75, everything's 75% off. Well, I could have kicked myself because at the time I didn't stitch on 40 count. I just wanted to see, buy a piece to see what it was like. And that's the piece I chose. That and a piece of R&R, &R, um, like Liberty Gathering Gray or something like that. So, when I first went in there, they had tons of 40 count. They had half yards of lakeside. They had tons of 40 count at 75% off. Which means, if you know the going cost of a fat half of lakeside linen, I paid $12.50 for this. Now, if this is another one of those situations where I made bad choices in my youth, because Jessica today would go in, I would ravage that 40 count section. I mean, all the lakeside, except for maybe the pink ones. You can keep the pink and yellow. I don't like yellow, but all the lakeside. Now I did get some 32 count. I have a thing of 36, but uh, the things I missed out on Half yards of lakeside for twelve dollars and fifty cents. Hmm. Oh well, it'll happen. Uh, so anyway, I am so looking forward to starting this one. Um, it's uh, kind of a coincidence. It was definitely a coincidence that um, all three of these use uh, Spot Delger silks. Um, but they are the three I was most excited about starting. So as I do some of my uh, 2020 stitching goals, then my plan is, to, is um, to introduce some of those into my stitching. Uh, but I have to do it kind of strategically because as I said, I tend to stitch on something and focus on it. Um, I've just found that's the way that I stitch best. If I go with it until I just am absolutely do not want to, until I reach the point where I sit down and I say, I want to stitch tonight, I don't want to stitch on this. And then I'll swap out. Uh, so I just need to figure out which one of these I want to start first. I'm thinking it was going to be, it was going to be Anne Ufendel, and then it was going to be Dorothy Waffle. But now I think I really want to start Anne Thomas because I want to see how she looks on this, um, on this fawn linen. And I gotta say, it was between Fawn and um, I had another piece of this 
pecan butter by Lakeside. Um, and I was really rooting for, it's a little darker than it shows up here, the lights being weird. That's better. Um, I was really rooting for this because it was a, my other piece is a fat quarter. And that meant I would not have to cut it down because this is deceptively small and it fits on a fat quarter of 40 count. Um, yeah, for 40 count, I'm back. The fabric needed is like 19.2 by 21 point something. So, I mean, a fat quarter is like 18 by 27. So, you can, if you're willing to have smaller margins, you can fit on fat quarter. But it just, it just looks so good on the fawn. I had to go with that. So, all right. We have finally reached the end of my mini stacks. Um, it's been an eventful video. <laughs> Uh, there's some parts I'll have to go through, like the part with Bailey and check and be like, you didn't like flash anything inappropriate at the camera, did you? <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope that, um, uh, I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed watching and I will see you next time. I have a few, um, I have a busy couple months coming up. I have a f several retreats I'm going to all at once. There's, um, my... Um, Sampler Girdle Georgia retreat in Helen. There is uh, the Prim Stitchers retreat in Asheville. And then I'm going to uh, Stitch Nanigans again in Phoenix. So all of those are kind of back to back to back uh, with a very short break in between. Um, so those are coming up. I uh, have a few other things planned with, um, with my husband. Um, but yeah, we'll see how much progress I can get done on these, on these stitching goals. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, it's been, it's been really good, uh, really satisfying to have so many finishes in January and to see if I can knock out that sampler in February. Um, I think I can do it. If I'm really ambitious, I'll aim for the sampler and wild garden or the sampler and an ornament. But as long as I can get the sampler, I'll be good. So. All right, well, happy stitching, and I will catch you next time. Bye.